even though Daniel was put in the den of lions, the mouths of the lions were shut up because he opened his mouth to praise God. He opened his mouth to pray unto God. That's what happens in our lives when we continue to open our mouths to praise God. When we continue to pray unto God and open our mouth for God, that's when the devil shuts his mouth. Otherwise, Peter says in his first letter, chapter 5, verse 8, the devil is looking to devour us as a roaring lion. Glory to God. Uh, thank you for the kind words, uh, Brother Dixon. I did not pay him to say all those words. <laughs> and, uh, I wanted to thank uh, Pastor Dave and uh, Pastor Lynn for this wonderful privilege that you have given me to share what God has put in my heart. And uh, thank you, Brother Dixon, for driving us. And I'm so glad to see uh, Brother Jim and his wife, and also Brother Ted. And uh, yeah, I give all glory to God for this time. And uh, yeah, before we go into message, uh, I wanted to start with something funny. So. I can understand I'm able to communicate with you well enough so you will understand the message. Um, yeah, there was a um, angle, uh, but uh, her father, uh, you know, was very poor and uh, very old, and uh, her mother died, so he was looking to arrange a marriage uh, for her. Uh, in India, parents still arrange the marriages, so it is their responsibility. And uh, yeah, I wanted to uh, tell a story about how uh, I got trapped by my wife. And, uh, uh, how after that I have to follow her. So uh, anyway, we both are following Jesus. That's a good thing. Um, so in India, we have a dowry system. So most of the parents, you know, they are worried about a gold child. Uh, that's the reason Dr. Job wanted to uh, build a home for the girls. So when um, my wife and I decided to marry, uh, that dowry that I asked from my wife is, uh, I told her that she has to memorize 1,000 scriptures. <coughs> and uh, she did it by the grace of God. Uh, I want my wife to walk with me in the Lord, uh, so that's a wonderful thing. So, yeah, coming to the story, you know, uh, our father was trying uh, to arrange a marriage for her daughter, but because uh, he doesn't have much money, uh, he could not arrange it. But all of a sudden, you know, his father had a heart attack, uh, so she took him to the hospital, and he was admitted in the hospital. Uh, the father was really worried about the daughter because, you know, uh, he wants to arrange a marriage for her before he dies. So he was really thinking about it. But the good news is uh, the daughter uh, got a message uh, saying that uh, some time ago her father brought a lottery ticket and her father had won a million dollars. So she was very happy and she wanted to go and convey the message to his father as soon as possible. But uh, she thought for a moment, if I share this good news with my dad, he may get another heart attack and may die. So I better go to the doctor and tell him uh, how to convey this message. So she went to the doctor and told what had happened. And the doctor told her what you've done is good uh, because your father had already a heart attack. It's not a good way to share. So I will think and share with him uh, the message. So the doctor went to the father and uh, he said, uh, he asked him, in fact, you know, what would you do if you win a million dollars? And the father said to the doctor, if I win a million dollars, I will give you half of the amount. And the doctor got heart attack and died. <laughs> <laughs> he never thought that he would be getting so much money. So anyway, uh, I think I'm able to communicate with you well. So I thank God for that. And uh, yeah, today my topic is 
uh, the five smooth stones that you should gather. The five smooth stones that you should gather. We all know the story, even uh, we might be knowing that from our Sunday school days, uh, the story of David and Goliath. And the people of Israel were afraid to go to the battle. And nobody was willing to go to him to fight against him. That was the situation. But I wanted to read a scripture when David saw that situation, what he has done. If we go to the first Samuel chapter 17, verses 40, there the Bible says, and he took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had even in his crib. And his sling was in his hand and he drew near to the Philistine. So here I want you to remember five things because these five things, if we can apply to our spiritual life, even we are facing spiritual battles in our spiritual life. There not be a physical Goliath in front of us, but there may be some problems, some situations, some circumstances in our lives, they'll look as big as Goliath right in front of us. They may be looking tall, as tall as Goliath, as strong as Goliath. And you may be afraid of the situation. You may not be knowing what to do in this situation as Saul, but let us become David's. And here, David, what he had done, the Bible says, he went unto the brook. The first thing I want you to remember is brook. And I wanted to compare brook with the Holy Bible. Let's think the brook as a holy Bible and how he went to the brook. The Bible says he had staff in his hand. And the second thing I want you to remember is the staff. And I want you to compare it with the salvation that God has given us. Don't ever neglect your salvation. God has given us for free of cost, but it costed the life of our Savior. He has to shed his holy blood to cleanse us from all sin and unrighteousness. So don't ever neglect it. The only thing that you will hold in your hand is that it's more precious. So let us hold the salvation in our hand. And let us go unto the brook, the Holy Bible. And then in the brook, he gathered five smooth stones. And in a while, we will be studying what are the five smooth stones that we have to gather. And then we see uh, he has gathered those five stones and put in his shepherd bag. So the... Fourth, the fourth thing I want you to remember is shepherd's back. I wanted to compare it with our spiritual life. So the third thing is the five stones, which we will be talking about soon. So those five stones has to be kept in our spiritual life. God has given unto us every spiritual blessing. That's what Paul writes, writes to the Ephesians in first chapter verse 3 we are blessed with every spiritual blessing so God has given unto us a spiritual life it is like a shepherd's bag and we have to fill that spiritual life 
with the five smooth stones that which we have to gather. And the fifth thing I want you to remember is the swing, and I wanted to compare it with the Holy Spirit. And David used the swing to kill Goliath with the stones that he has gathered. So if we can gather the five smooth stones in our spiritual life, the Holy Spirit is ready to give us his power because when you throw a stone directly with your hand, it may not be that much powerful. But when you use the swing, that's when you get the more power. So God has given unto us his spirit and his spirit is very powerful. That's what Acts 1 8 says. When the Holy Spirit comes upon us, we are filled with power to be a testimony and witness unto God, even unto the uttermost parts of the earth. So the Spirit of God is given unto us. The swing is there. But the question is, do we have the five smooth stones? Where can we gather these stones? David went unto the brook to gather the five smooth stones. And this Holy Bible has that five smooth stones. And if we can gather them, no matter how big your situations are, how big the devil is looking in front of you, no matter how much big your depression might be looking in front of you, no matter how your problems are looking, if you can gather the stones, those stones will be used by the Holy Spirit to give you victory over Goliath or your situation. So the first stone, I wanted to compare it with the praise. We have to praise God. We must have a life of giving thanks unto God. If we don't have that attitude, you will never grow in the Lord. We are called to grow in His knowledge and His grace. If you have a baby, and if that baby is not growing, you will be disappointed. You will cry. You will go to your doctor and see why my baby is not growing. What is problem with him or with her? Because you wanted to see your baby grow as a parent, as a heavenly father. Yes, he has saved us and we became his children. Now God wants us to grow as a disciples. So if we don't have growth, we have to examine, are we praising God? <clears throat> you will learn from this Bible how to praise God, how to thank God. And that stone can be found in the Bible. If you read the Bible, the man of God in the Bible, they always praised God. King David said in Psalm 34 verse 1, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. No matter what my situation is, no matter what my circumstances are, I continue to praise God because when I praise God, that's when I grow in the Lord. And the second stone, I wanted to compare it with the prayer. You must have a prayer life. Without prayer, you are a dead Christian. There's no doubt about that. You may be coming to church for years. Your father or your grandfather may be a missionary, but you must have a prayer life. We learn that from the life of Jesus Christ. And Luke 6 12 says that he is to spend all the night in the prayer. Let's think for a moment. If a son of God that was sent by God, if a word that became flesh needs a prayer all night, how much more we shall need <coughs> prayer life. Amen. And the interesting thing about praise and prayer is 
they both go together. Praise the Lord. Amen. They both go together. When you read the scriptures, every time you say prayer and thanksgiving, prayer and praise, they both go together. If you have a doubt, why am I not able to pray more? The solution is you have to add praise to your prayer. You have to add thanks to your prayer. That's when you can pray more. And I want to remind you an example from the Old Testament and from the New Testament. How the prayer and praise go together. Before that, I want you to remind the words of Apostle Paul that he wrote to Philippines, uh, chapter uh, 4, verse 6. He said, Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. When Paul talks about prayer life, when Paul talks about interceding life, he is telling that you have to do it with thanksgiving. And he writes the same thing to the church in Thessalonica. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 17, 18 verses says, Pray without ceasing, give thanks to God. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Whenever he's talking about the prayer, he's also talking about giving thanks to God. Because our prayer life has to go with the thankfulness. And that's what Daniel did. Daniel chapter 6 verse 10 says now when Daniel knew that the king was signed on the writing that if any man will make any plea to any God or any man that he will be put in a den of lions Daniel went into his room and he kneeled upon his knees three times and he prayed and gave thanks before his God. Do you know what will happen when you do that? You will go to the den of lions. <laughs> it's not an easy thing. When Daniel made the decision, he went into the den of lions. But that's where you enjoy the presence of God and the power of Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. When Daniel was put in a den of lions because of praying and because of praising God. Because Daniel opened his mouth to pray unto God. Because Daniel opened his mouth to praise God. That's when the devil's mouth was shut up. Hallelujah. Even though Daniel was put in the den of lions. The mouths of the lions were shut up. Because he opened his mouth to praise God. He opened his mouth to pray unto God. That's what happens in our lives when we continue to open our mouths to praise God. When we continue to pray unto God and open our mouth for God. That's when the devil shuts his mouth. Otherwise, Peter says in his first letter, chapter 5, verse 8, the devil is looking to devour us as a roaring lion. So many Christians, it is so sad to see they are in the jaws of the lion, the devil, because they left the life of praise. They left the life of prayer. But when you continue it, you will see the power of God. I'm glad to know that America doesn't have that is at sign 
we don't have that law here. If you praise God, if you pray to Jesus, you will be put in that den of lions. But yet, we are not praising God. We don't have that law in India. But yet, as a believers, we are not praising God enough. We are not praying enough. That's the reason we are being trapped by the devil. That's the reason the situations, the problems, the depression, the difficulties, the disappointments are still looking so big in front of us as a Goliath. But the good thing is, yes, this is the time for you to go <coughs> unto the word of God, the brook. Gather the smooth stones of prayer and praise. When you can gather those two things, the Holy Spirit will help you to praise God at all times. No matter what situation you are going through. No matter how hard your circumstances look. No matter how uh, much health issues you are dealing with. No matter what are the uh, financial problems that you are going through. Yet God will help you to praise him all the times. To pray unto him at all times. Amen. Let us gather the stones of praise and prayer. I gave my life to Christ at the age of 11. And God called me to serve him at the age of 14. I told my dad I wanted to serve the Lord. But the good thing is he encouraged me in that. Though we were facing a lot of financial uh, problems in our lives at the time, he encouraged me to come into the ministry. When I decided to follow Christ, I had plenty of time. And that's when the Lord taught me to memorize the scriptures. And I, I not only just memorized the scriptures, but I recite them daily. I used to recite them in my heart but somehow the scriptures used to jump. But the Lord told me to recite loudly so I can hear it. So when I started to do that, that's when the Lord taught me to worship according to his word. That's when the Lord taught me to pray according to his word. So the practice of memorizing scriptures helped me to write those two little booklets. They have been a great blessing to many people in India. And I hope they will be in even America. So I recite a scripture and I thank God for that scripture. And then I make that scripture as a prayer. So every day to recite my memory verses, I will be spending from three hours to five hours in prayer and worship. So that's how the Lord taught me to grow in him. If I want to pray without scripture, it will be only five minutes. But when you add scripture to it, and when you thank God for every scripture, and when you pray scripture, that's when you can build your spiritual life. And that's when you become so strong to fight against Goliath. David was looking so small in front of Goliath, but the life of prayer and praise that he had gave him boldness to go in front of him to fight against him. So don't be afraid. Don't look at Goliath. Don't look how tall he is. Don't look how big he is. Don't look at the weapons that he has. Look unto God. Praise him for what he has done in your life. Pray to him. Remember the good things that God has done in your life. And thank him for that. That's when you will have the boldness. You all know the story. When David wanted to go and fight with Goliath. He went to the king Saul. And Saul said unto him. You have to wear this dress. You have to have these weapons. But David told, they are too heavy for me. I cannot wear them. 
And David remembered what the Lord has done in his life. For Samuel chapter 17 verses 37 says, David said, Moreover, the Lord that deliver me out of false lion and powder, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And then Saul said unto David, Go, and God be with you. So he was not looking at Goliath, but he was looking at what God has done in his life because he was thankful to God for what he has done in his life. That's when he got the power to go and fight with Goliath. So continue to remember what the Lord has done in your lives. Continue to praise him for what he has done in your lives. You may be in between the jaws of the lion, the devil. You might have stopped praying. You might have stopped praising God. And now you may be struggling in the jaws of the devil, the lion. But yet God is able to deliver you still now, even now. It's not all over. Now you have to cry out to God. When a shepherd boy, David, could deliver a, a, a sheep out of the lion's mouth, how much more can our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, can deliver us even now? When we are in the jaws of the devil lion. Yes, he is able to deliver us now. But all you have to do is. You have to cry out to God. When that sheep or the lamb was crying, shouting. When it is in between the jaws of the lion. That's when David heard sound. That something is going on wrong here. So he went and rescued it. Let us cry unto God right now. If you are in between the jaws of the lion, the devil. He hears us. He is ready to rescue you. Rededicate your lives. And start praising God. And start praying to God. <laughs> Gather the smooth stones from reading the Holy Bible. And the other example that I wanted to bring you is from the New Testament. And you all know about Paul and Silas in the, in the book of Acts chapter 16 verses uh, 25 and 26 says, At midnight Paul and Silas were praying and they sang praises unto God and the prisoners heard them. Where are they? They are in a prison. You may be in a prison today. You may be in bonds. But yet, if you can praise God, if you can pray to God, that's when the miracle will happen. Of course, Paul was so happy and he and Silas were filled with joy. That's the reason they could not sleep in the midnight. But your situation may be different. Because of your problems. Because of your depression. Because of your circumstances and situations. You may not be able to sleep. But when you are not able to sleep. Remember this is the time to praise God. And to pray to him. Don't be discouraged. Don't think about what you have to do. What can be happened. When you are unable to find sleep. That's the time for us to praise God. Hallelujah. That's the time for us to pray unto God. That's what Paul and Silas did. When they were not able to sleep because of the joy. They were filled with joy because they were put into prison for the word of God. So at the midnight, they are singing praises and praying unto God. The next verse says, And suddenly a big earthquake came, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And, and immediately all the doors were opened. And everyone's bands were loosed. You may be under bondage. 
the devil might have kept you in a prison of sin, prison of depression, prison of discouragement, prison of health issues. But don't be discouraged. But that's the time to praise God. That's the time to pray unto God. When you pray and when you praise, when you can't sleep, when the things are not going good for you, that's when God will come into action. And that's when a great earthquake came and the foundations of the prison were shaken so that all the doors could be opened. God is able to open doors for you. The doors which are locked. The doors which seem to be never opened. The doors which you don't have keys for. Hallelujah. Paul and Silas doesn't have keys for the door that was locked. But when they praised God. But when they prayed. That's when God came. And shaken the foundations of the prison. And with that shaking all the doors in prison were opened Amen. and that's when they became blessing to the prison of Isabel. you may be bound you may be discouraged you may be thinking low on yourself you may be thinking that i cannot go further but when you pray when you pray the same in the same situation God will make you to shine and he will make you a blessing to others. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. That's the reason I want you to encourage every one of us, including me. Let us continue to praise God. Let us continue to pray. Let us continue to pray without ceasing. Let us continue to give thanks to God in everything. In everything Bible says. Even in your failure, give thanks to God. Even in your problem, give thanks to God. Even in your lack, give thanks to God. That's what Jesus did. There were more than 5,000 men. There were so many women and children to be fed. But all he had is only five loaves and two fishes. What he, could, what he could do with that. If I was in that place. I probably went to a lonely place and ate them. <laughs> because they are only sufficient for me. But Jesus said no bring them. Because I wanted to thank God for what is available here. Just thank God for what is available with you. Just thank God for what he has already given you. Don't think about what you don't have. The devil always wants you to remind you the things that you don't have. But the Holy Spirit always wants to remind you the things which God has already given you. Because when you are reminded by the, by the things that the Holy Spirit has already given you, that's when you can praise God. When Jesus took those five loaves and two fishes and thanked God, that's when the miracle happened. That's when... The 5,000 men were fed. They were satisfied. And even more was left. That's what happened in another occasion. When there were seven loaves, Jesus thanked God for them. So don't be discouraged for what you don't have. Thank God for what you already have. That's when you will receive the blessing. Amen. Amen. So the third thing I wanted to compare, the third stone is uh, word of God. You must have a smooth stone of word of God in your spiritual life. How much word of God you have in your shepherd bag? Both in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, the Bible clearly says that we should have the Word of God in our hearts. 
And God said unto the people of Israel in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4, He says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and those shall love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. If you don't have the word of God in your heart, you cannot teach to your children. <coughs> and that's what my dad taught me. When he was in his teenage, he was possessed with demons. He is a Hindu devotee. He went to all the temples that he can. He visited all the priests that he can. All the message that he got was, he has to suffer and there is no hope. It is his karma. So he has to die with the demons. Then he got addicted to all bad habits because there is no hope for him. But one day one of his friends told him that Jesus can save your life. He simply rejected it because we have million gods. Why should I worship Jesus? Mm -hmm. But that night, Jesus appeared to him in a dream and said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Amen. And the next day, he went to his friend and told him, Jesus appeared to me and said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh unto the Father but by him. And his friend told him, that is in the Bible. So you take this New Testament Bible and read. And then he started to read with his verses. And that's when the demons in him trembled and could not stay. Hallelujah. Amen. That's when he thought there is power in the word of God. Amen. So what he did was, whenever the demons used to come and trouble him in the night time, he used to switch on the light and read the Bible mm. to get rid of the demons. But his mother at that time was a Hindu and she did not allow him to switch on the light, but she threw the Bible out of the house. That's when Holy Spirit gave him an idea to keep God's word in his heart. Oh, amen. That's how he started to memorize the scriptures. And today, as Pastor my Brother Dixon told, he has memorized 5,000 scriptures. And he memorized all in English language in KJV worship. And he taught us same. And I taught my wife say, and I'm teaching my children say, and I wish and pray that my children will teach the same to my grandchildren. Amen. And the ministry that we have in India is we encourage kids on the streets, kids in the prisons to keep God's word in their hearts. Mm -hmm. We educate them with the word of God because the word of God has knowledge, understanding, wisdom, everything, healing, everything. Everything is in the Word of God. So we educate them by teaching the Word of God. We help them to keep God's Word in their hearts. So Word of God is very, very important to us. That's the reason Apostle Paul said unto the church in Colossians. We all know John 3.16. And we have to know Colossians 3.16. It says, let the Word of Christ dwell in you. Richly in all wisdom. So the, the, the words of Christ. Must be in us. When we have the word of God. That's when we do know that. Jesus said in Matthew 22. 29. And Jesus answered and said unto them. Ye have. Ye don't know scriptures. Nor the power of God. Why do we make bad decisions? Why do our children make bad decisions? Why are we going in the wrong direction? Because we don't know an afford of God. How many times in our lives we thought, if I would have known that scripture, I would not have made that decision. I would not, I would not have gone in that way. And later we regret it. And that's the reason we have to know the anaphore of God. Because when we know the word of God, 
we will not do error. And King David said in Psalm 119, 11, if we can have the word of God, we cannot sin. Hallelujah. Thy word, how I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. David has learned a lesson after sinning. He examined his life, why, could, why he committed sin. And then he understood that I have to keep God's word in my heart. And I know many people say Psalm 119 is not written by King David, but I do believe that it was written by King David because the Bible says Psalm 19 was written by David. And if you see Psalm 19 and 119, you can see both the authors talking about the word of God, testimonies of God, judgments of God, statues of God. So I believe it was written by David. And what a life he had when he kept the word of God in his heart. And he writes in Psalm 119, 164, I praise God seven times a day because of his righteous judgments. He's not praising God for what he has done in his life. Now he has started to praise God for his scripture, for his word, for his commandments. So let us grow into that spiritual life to thank God for this word. I don't know how many nations or how many people still don't have Bible in their own language. But what a privilege <laughs> that America is given. You have maybe hundreds of translations when the word of God is still available to us. Let us gather the word of God from the Holy Bible and keep and hide in our hearts. And Second Timothy chapter 3 Verses 16 and 17 says, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished into all good works. Oh, what a great blessing we have. Amen. It will correct you. So, it will help you to be a godly man, a godly woman, a godly mother, a godly father, a godly grandfather, a godly grandmother. So I want you to encourage to gather the word of God. There are a lot of other scriptures that I, that I can quote how much the word of God is really blessing to us. But I know I'm, I have time limitation. In India, we preach for one and a half hours and two hours. And Pastor Dave was telling me when he first came to India, you know, he gave a 45 to 50 minute sermon. And the people were not happy because they wanted to hear all the day. I'm glad you are not like that. But anyway, let us gather the word of God when it's available. And there is a scripture that says, there will be a famine for the word of God. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to see a group of people can recite the whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Even if Bibles are not available, even if any technology comes and removes everything from the satellite, I'm praying that God will raise some people <coughs> who can recite the Bible for the people in the end days because he's a loving God. He wants everyone to be saved because he has shed his blood for everyone. Thank you. Amen. And the fourth thing, I wanted to compare the smooth stone with fasting. And when the Son of God, Jesus Christ,
had to fast for 40 days and 40 nights before he could start his ministry. How much more fasting do we need? You may question me, why do I need fasting? Yes, we all do need fasting. And Jesus said, why do we need fasting? In Mark Gospel chapter 9, we see a father came unto the disciples of Jesus because his son is possessed with a demon of death and mute. His son could not hear, could not speak. So he brought unto the disciples of Jesus because at that time Jesus, Jesus was praying on a mountain. The disciples could not cast the demon out. But the good thing is, the father never gave up. He wanted to come unto Jesus. He knew that there is something special in Jesus. I don't know if any of the members or the audience hearing online, if you have a discouragement because you went to some pastor, some church, and you found no use, don't quit on Jesus because of the pastor or the church. Come unto Jesus. He has the power. Don't give up on Jesus because of somebody. Yeah. That person is not our example. Jesus is our example. But when he came to Jesus, Jesus was able to deliver him from that demon. And the disciples of Jesus asked him, and he was, you know, in the house or in a home, why could not we cast the demon out? And Mark uh, chapter 9 verse 29 says, Jesus said unto them, This kind go forth by nothing by prayer and fasting. They never had the experience of fasting. So that's the reason they could not cast out the demon. You may be thinking, oh, I don't have a son that is deaf and mute. I don't need to fast. But I wanted to tell you, because of that demon, even though you have mouth, you are set to pray to Jesus. Because of that demon in you, even though you have mouth to pray and praise God, you are not able to praise. You are not able to pray. Even though you have physical ears to hear. You are not able to hear the word of God. You are not able to hear the voice of the spirit of God. But when you are not able to pray to God. When you are not able to praise God. That's the time for you to fast. Hallelujah. When you fast and pray. That's when God will give you victory over the demon. That's when you start to praise God. That's when you start to pray to God. As I told you, I had plenty of time from the age of 14 to age of 21. So not only the Lord taught me to memorize, recite, spend more time in his presence, but he taught me to fast and pray. I began with one day of fasting. When I done that, I realized, oh, what a blessing there is in fasting. So I did three day fasting. And then I did seven day fasting. And then I did 14 days, 21 days, 28 days. And the Lord helped me to fast for 40 days and 40 nights on liquid. Oh, that's when I learned many things from the Lord. And by the grace of God, from 2015 to 2020, my wife and I fasted 
five times for 40 days and 40 nights. And that's when we lose our weight and we take pictures. <laughs> so the pictures that you see on the books, it was taken right after the 40th day of that. <laughs> but when you pray in fasting, you know, uh, like uh, Brother Dixon told, we have printed and uh, you know, mailed out and distributed over two million tracks. It's not about printing and distribution, but every Friday, my wife and myself fast and pray. We pray for the every tract that is being distributed. That one day, Holy Spirit will reveal himself to them. And I was sharing with Pastor Dave yesterday, one of my highlights of United States visit is preaching the gospel on the seashore of Sea Beach. You never know how many people heard the gospel. You cannot see with your eyes how many people hearing the word of God with attention. But I believe one day, maybe even on their deathbed, the Holy Spirit will remind the words that they heard that day on the seashore of Seal Beach. Amen. It doesn't have to be exactly on that day, that moment. But God has his own plans. I was telling uh, with uh, Brother Dixon, if I remember correctly, and one man who received gospel tract, he folded it and kept on his uh, leaves roof. But one day because of rain and wind, that roof fell down. And that's when he found that gospel tract and read and got saved, hallelujah. Wow. You never know. Yes, wind and rain is good. <laughs> there is a blessing in fasting. So, when you see a big problem in front of you, go to the word of God. The man of God in the Bible fasted. Moses fasted. Elias fasted. Jesus fasted. Daniel, many people in the Bible, you know, that they fasted and prayed. So the fifth thing, the most important thing is the stone of fellowship. We need to have fellowship. Yes. Do you know what happened to Peter when he was in prison? It was written in the book of Acts chapter 2 verses 5. Peter was in between two soldiers. He was bound with two chains and at he was sleeping. Well, we just saw Apostle Paul and Silas at the midnight, they were singing and they were praying. But here we see Peter was sleeping. But do you know what happened in the fifth verse? The church was praying for him without ceasing. Hallelujah. When the church was praying for him without ceasing, that's when God sent his angel and spoke to Peter, rise up, come out. Walk with me, follow me. You may be a believer in Christ, roaming here and there, a week in this church, a week in another church, but I want to, I want to encourage you to abide in one church. You must have that connection, fellowship with the local church. And I'm so thankful to Brother Dixon he was telling me he was a member of this church for 30 years. You must have a pastor who can pray for you when you are not able to pray. You must have a fellow believers that can pray for you when you are not able to pray. Yes, God uses their prayers. Yeah, there's the scriptural evidence. Peter was sleeping. But that God used the prayers of the church to release him from the prison. 
And there's a reason Apostle Paul writes to the church in Hebrew, don't forsake in gathering as an assembly together. When you see the day approaching, neglect not to gather as an assembly. You have to gather as an assembly. You must have the fellowship because in the last days, you need much prayer. So when you can gather the stone of fellowship from the word of God, that's when you can stand with boldness right in front of Goliath. Shall we gather the five stones from the word of God, the praise, the prayer, the word of God, the fasting, the fellowship, <coughs> When you can have that five stones, that's when the sling comes into action. Well, you may say to me, David was able to kill with one stone, and why would I need five stones? <laughs> well, you never know how the Holy Spirit will help you. The Holy Spirit may want to use the, the life of praise to give you victory over Goliath. The Holy Spirit may want to use the life of prayer to give victory over Goliath. The Holy Spirit may want to use the word of God that is in your heart to give victory over Goliath. The Holy Spirit may want to give you victory through the fasting. The Holy Spirit may want to give you a victory over Goliath through the fellowship as he gave to the Peter. Let us go to the brook and have the salvation of God in our hand. And let us have the Holy Spirit. Don't try to throw stones at the devil with your own power. It is not sufficient. You need the sling. You, you keep the prayer life in the sling, in the Holy Spirit. And that's when the Holy Spirit can swing it with much more power. And one shot is enough to kill Goliath. And that's what David did. With one shot, he could kill Goliath. <laughs> Let us gather and continue to pray for our nations. We are praying that God would save every soul in this nation. I have great concern for this nation <coughs> because missionaries from this country came to India. They brought the gospel. They brought the medicine. They brought education. And Pastor Dale came to India 13 times, leaving all the comforts in the United States. My kids are telling me that they, won't, that they don't want to go back to India. <laughs> but my heart is for India. But then I have a heart for America. So we have been praying for this nation that God will raise this nation <laughs> for his glory. Yes. And everyone in this nation will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Yes. May the Lord help us to gather the five smooth stones from the word of God. Yes. And let Holy Spirit use all that we have gathered and bring us victory. God bless you. Thank you so much.